Hey everyone, it's Matthew from Midland Pictures. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can drastically speed up your editing time in Final Cut Pro 10. All right, it's been a hot minute, everyone, hasn't it? You see I got a new poster in the back, did a little bit of remodeling. If you checked out some of the other videos, uh, my apologies for not having another video sooner, especially with everyone watching my Final Cut tutorials. Can't thank you all enough for watching those videos, subscribing to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about something that is really based more on workflow than actual features tips, tricks in Final Cut Pro 10 itself. I've been a professional editor for just about 10 years since I graduated film school, working on everything from concert video content, documentary films, to corporate video. And the thing that I am always interested in is how can I get faster and more efficient with my workflow? Most importantly, how can I get to the actual point of editing the video I filmed or that someone else has filmed as soon as possible? If you think about a painter or an artist someone who's drawing something, there aren't a lot of obstacles or hurdles in the way for them to actually get started with work. A sculptor just needs to get clay, their material together to start getting to work. Same thing for a painter. Canvas, some brushes, and the paint, that's all you need to be ready to paint when the moment strikes you. With video, it's a lot different. Not only do you have to create the footage or source the footage, but you also have to set up your projects. You have to get the footage into your computer. You have to organize it all. If you're someone who organizes, which I hope you are, and it can be quite a process before you're actually sitting down and editing footage. Now, for a lot of us, we're one man banding, we're doing everything ourselves, and we need to get into the work as soon as possible, but there's so much work to do to set it up. So I wanna talk about how you can use templates to be able to get to that work much sooner than if you don't use templates. So what's a template? There's two templates that I use. I use what I call my file tree template and I use my Final Cut Pro 10 library template. The file tree template is a series of folders that keeps my media organized in a uniform and consistent way. Every time I go on a shoot, there's a place for my audio, my footage, my screen recordings, my stills, the different media I'm using to create the final video. Same thing with Final Cut. Once in Finder, you have everything organized. If you do Final Cut, like maybe most of us do, you're creating all these events, collections, smart collections, keyword collections from scratch every time you start up a project and you're just wasting a ton of time. So I'm gonna go through, not necessarily a step-by-step -step workflow of how I start a project, but I'm gonna give you a little tour of my file tree template as well as my Final Cut Pro 10 library template and show you how you can set something like that up very easily using just Finder and Final Cut Pro 10. And for those of you that want to take things to the next level, I'm going to drop uh, some information on an application that takes those steps and makes it much simpler, especially if you have a lot of custom workflows like After Effects, motion, photography, videography. So let's take a look at the screen recording and I'm gonna show you my file tree template. I use two primarily, one for my YouTube videos and one for my paid commercial work through my production company. So you can see here we're in Finder and I've got all these folders. Take a look at this template folder and I have four templates here. I have my Midland Projects template and my Midland YouTube template. Let's just go through my Midland YouTube template. So this one's pretty simple. I have a documents folder if I need to create a script or any documents that go along with the video that I'm producing. I have a project files folder that has DaVinci Resolve stuff, which I don't really do a lot with my YouTube videos, but um, if I need to, I, I wanna have that project file there. And then FCP. So the media folder is where I spend the bulk of my time getting a project ready when I'm importing footage, stills, whatever I've done to make a video. So you got audio, content, film, graphics, screen recordings, and stills. And then I have a finals folder so that when I export my final video, it goes into that finals folder. So if I ever need to access it in my archives, I always have a final sort of master version of the file. For my projects for my company, I have a documents folder that has a lot more stuff broken down inside of it. A project files folder which just has Final Cut and DaVinci right now. I don't use a lot of After Effects. I don't use a lot of motion. There aren't a lot of other projects that I use, so I don't put folders in there. If I do use one of those projects, I'll create a folder. I have a media folder, very similar to my YouTube, except it's missing screen recordings. I almost never do screen recordings for my paid work, so I just have audio, content, film, graphics, and stills. And then I have a renders folder 
folder. So in some of the applications that we use or that my collaborators use, I need them to render stuff out of a timeline and give it to me. Or if it's something complicated for DaVinci, like something with a mixed resolution, frame rate, a Ken Burns effect on a still, I need to export something out of the timeline and bring it back into the project. I like to keep all that stuff in a separate folder from my media folder. And then I also have a roughs folder so that when we're kicking out rough edits for clients, we have a place to put those. Then I have a turnover folder. I work with a colorist and on occasion I work with sound designers and sound mixers. So I need to be able to put the, the XMLs and things like that that I'm creating into place for turnover. And then finally the finals folder. Same thing as my YouTube template. That's where all the final versions of my videos go. It's a really simple way to get up and running quickly and to always have your media organized. And if you work with other contractors, especially if they work with you a lot, you can kind of impose your file tree template on them so that when they're working on your stuff and bring it back to you, everything matches up. You know where to go to find all of your footage, content, finals, roughs, renders, whatever it is that you create. And that's what where some of you may be going, my footage is disorganized. I put stuff in random places. When I'm in the middle of a project, I have a hard time tracking down where I put this, where this thing is. Maybe it's not even in the same project folder. Maybe some things on your desktop, it's on a drive, it's on this drive, it's in the cloud, it's on the SD card that you filmed with. This is how you can very quickly and easily get organized even if you're not the most organized person. So the same idea for a project tree template applies to Final Cut Pro 10. If you look at my project files folder, I've got FCP here and inside I have a Final Cut library template. So what's that mean? Well, if we open up Final Cut, we can take a look and see how I have my events and keyword collections created so I can get started as soon as possible after I import all my media. So in Final Cut, there's events, smart collections, keyword collections, and folders. Those are the primary ways that you can organize your footage. And I like to mirror my project tree template with my Final Cut template. So I have a project event, I have a footage event, I have an audio event, a stills event, and a graphics event. For my YouTube template, I also have a screen recordings event so that I have a place to put all my screen recordings. Under the project event, I have three smart collections, one for a rough edit, one for a color grade, and one for final edit. And I'll go into smart collections maybe in another video. They're a really incredible way to automatically organize media as you're working with it in Final Cut and even as you're importing it. Sometimes it can be a little bit more of an investment of time up front for the time savings later, and that's why some people might avoid it, but I really like to use smart collections where I do a lot of my most frequent work like duplicating projects so that every time I duplicate a rough edit and I'm up to V7, it automatically goes into the rough edit smart collection as opposed to me having to drag it to a rough edit keyword collection every time. So for my second event, I have a footage event that has folders in it with B-roll and interview. Those are the most common things we do here is B-roll and interview type videos. And then I have an audio event that has music that we use to score our videos and then any sound effects. So as I'm going through this, I can see already that I need to do a quick update on what I have in my audio event. So I'm gonna create a new folder and call it location. And I'm gonna create a smart collection for a lav. And then I'm going to create a smart collection for our boom microphone. And we'll call that boom. So now I just need to tell the smart collection what to look for. So I'm gonna double click it and then I'm gonna add one of these criteria. I'm just gonna say text. And then if the text in the file name includes uh, boom in it, that's how it's going to pull that file into that smart collection. And then if I go to lav, I can just double click that, choose text, and then type in lav. And now any file that I have that has the word lav in it will automatically go to that smart collection. The next event that I have is the stills event. And then after that, I have graphics. So in graphics, we'll sometimes get logos and graphic files, or I'll make like compound clips that have text in them and things like that. And I like to have a place to put all that stuff. So what this allows me to do again is it allows me to dive into editing after I import. And if your file tree is organized like mine is, you can very easily drag and drop things in, go through the import menu in Vinyl Cut and start getting all of your media in for edit. 
once you have all that, you're off to the races with your editing and you're off to the races much quicker than if you did all of these steps, created all of these things before every single edit that you did. So I know the title of this video is a little clickbaity, and it may have made you think that there was some amazing feature or, or special trick in Final Cut Pro 10 that would immediately speed up your editing time. I love those types of features and tricks and I've tried finding all of them that I can. Any that I know or learn about, I will definitely bring to all of your attention, but I can't emphasize enough how all of you, if you're editing a Final Cut Pro 10, you need to create a file tree template and create a Final Cut Pro 10 library template so that every time you start a project, you know exactly where to put your media in Finder. And then when you start your project and edit in Final Cut, all of that work is already done for you and you don't have to do it again. So I'm gonna walk you through how I create a new project in Finder. So let's say I'm in my clients here and let's say I'm gonna make a new client called uh, Kaboom Industries. And we filmed a video with them uh, this month. Uh, so I go 2020-4 and let's call it uh, Kaboom Vision Video. Then what I do is I go to my template folder and I grab my project template and I just copy it in and then I hit paste. All that stuff's there, including my Final Cut Pro 10 library template. So then what I'll do is I'll rename this Kaboom, I like all caps on my Final Cut library names, Kaboom Vision Video. So then when we open this and we're ready to go, again, all this stuff is already there and ready for me to start organizing, importing, and getting ready for my edit. These are very simple things that you can do to save a lot of time. Now I teased earlier about a software application that takes this file tree template idea and really takes it to the next level. And that application is called Post Haste. I learned about this application maybe less than a year ago and how you can create custom file tree templates for the different types of workflows that you have. If you guys haven't checked out Post Haste, definitely do it. What I am gonna do for all of you is I'm gonna drop a Dropbox link to my file tree template in the description for this video. Click that link, download it, use it all you want. I'll have my YouTube one and my professional video template in there. If it helps you to get your video started faster and organize your media in a much better way, that would be awesome. It's totally free. Use it, share it with your friends. Let me know if you have any feedback about it. We'd love to hear from you. I think that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys have any comments about this workflow and any ideas on how maybe I can improve it or what I should be doing differently, I'd love to hear you in the comments below. If you're not a subscriber, please click that subscribe button. We've added a ton of subscribers in the last couple of months, especially since I started these Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. There are more on the way as well as other great content, so we'd love it if you joined the channel and click the bell to receive notifications every time we upload a video. If you like this video, click the like button. It would help us out a ton, especially as we try to grow the channel. And until the next video, I will see you all soon.